You probably know somebody affected by it, or possibly even you are battling this same problem. Name brand versus generic prescriptions. Insurance companies want you to use the generic drugs because they are less expensive for the suppliers to make and cheaper for their companies to insure. In some cases, the generic version works just fine and there are no issues. But in others, the generic version has no comparable effect to the name brand version and it leaves the patient struggling financially as they pay full price for name brand medication. This documentary will focus on one such case. Whenever Laura was under my insurance plan up to the age of 26, every year in whatever company I worked for, in their plan document, they recognized medicine step therapy, which is a long list of things that you have to prove. It didn't take long to prove that Laura was on, um, hit those qualifications. Laura's current insurance on her state of Mississippi does not recognize medicine step therapy. And whenever you contact them and ask them, why not, or can you consider it, it still goes back to there's generic. You have to try the generic or switch to another drug. Meet Laura Hodge. Laura is married to Jamie Hodge. The couple has been married for three years and both teach school. Jamie is a special education teacher and is also an assistant coach for the football team. Laura is a first grade teacher at a financially struggling level one school. Laura was diagnosed with epilepsy at the age of nine months with simple partial secondary generalized, also known as grand mal seizures. She has been locked in an ongoing battle with the disease ever since. Epilepsy has many causes, takes many forms, and affects each person differently. This is especially true for people living with what is often called difficult to treat epilepsy. Laura has tried multiple anti-epileptic drugs, or AEDs, both brand and generic drug combinations and at high doses. On two separate occasions, she went through multiple very intense tests at Children's Hospital in Minnesota and UAB School of Medicine and found out that she was not a candidate for surgery. Surgery is only suitable for a minority of people with epilepsy and may be considered when medication fails to prevent seizures, especially partial seizures. Epilepsy can be described as difficult to treat after the failure of two anti-epileptic drugs to control seizures over an adequate period of time. Difficult to treat epilepsy is also often referred to as refractory epilepsy, drug-resistant epilepsy, and pharmacoresistant epilepsy. In addition to trying different combinations of AEDs to control seizures, Laura had a vagal nerve stimulator, or VNS, implanted below her left shoulder in 2002. With many AED trials, combinations, and VNS surgery, it has been a long journey to get to where Laura is today. After going seizure-free for nearly two and a half years and on only one AED, Felbitol, Laura developed medicine-induced lupus symptoms in the fall of 2007. Laura's doctor switched her to a new AED called Kepra in 2009. The one drug that works that allows her to have a normal life, to be a school teacher, to be married, to drive a car, to own a home. What allows her to do that is one drug and it's called Kepra XR. Due to companies pushing generic drugs over brand drugs, Laura tried to switch from Kepra to Levotiracetam in 2010. Within three days of taking Levotiracetam, Laura had a generalized seizure. This particular seizure came without notice. She fell freely to the floor and injured her back, an injury of which Laura still has problems today. Here goes part of just proving a point that she injured her spine to this day. The orthopedic has documented that's when she injured it. And one day she's gonna have to have surgery on her back. To this day, it's, uh, there's times where she actually tells me how bad her back hurts. In addition to taking Vimpat and generic brand Trileptol, Laura has been on Kepra XR for seizure control. This combination of AEDs is working. 
There is growing evidence to support the concept that brand name AEDs are not clinically equivalent to their generic counterparts. Patients reported an increase in seizure activity to their neurologists after treatment was switched from Keppra to generic levotiracetam. Subsequent to the increase in seizure frequency with generic levotiracetam, treatment in all patients was switched back to Keppra. Seizure frequency in all patients returned to baseline when Keppra was reinstituted, as in Laura's case. Laura spends each weekday teaching a class of 30 first graders. That is, 30 6 to 7 year olds that have very small attention spans. That kind of work could be stressful for a teacher with no medical issues, let alone one with a disease that involves seizures that are proven to be triggered by heightened stress levels. But Laura's done an outstanding job of overcoming every obstacle, and it is in large part due to the winning medicine combination she has found. But because of the overwhelming costs of name brand prescriptions, it is a constant struggle for the young educator. Because of the risks involved for women with epilepsy, doctors have frowned upon any feasible possibility of Laura being able to go through the pregnancy process, as well as there being no guarantee that that child would not be born with the disease. Laura and Jamie, who both want children, are currently in the midst of the adoption process. A long and tireless process, eventually the couple hopes to be approved and bring home a child to call their own. But both understand that having a child would add even more financial burden to an already shoestring budget. At the end of the day, the reason I'm here talking to anybody that can hear this and who will listen, take time to listen, I just want somebody, and I don't know who that person is, there may be one person out there that can actually find out how people can get past that, tell me where I need to go next, what is our next step. I will fight for my daughter to the day I die. I will do whatever I can because she deserves it.